you can't go wrong with Now It's Dark. Hey everybody, welcome to Now It's Dark. I'm Jim. I just finished watching on Prime Video a Halloween Feast. This movie was crazy fun um, and stars Lynn Lowry, who is uh, at this point screen queen, legend, horror icon. And she really shines in this movie. She really, really has so much awesomeness going on. Um, so this movie is a dark comedy by Gail Bronco. Uh, Lynn Lowry plays Angela, a former dancer who descends into madness. And if you're familiar with the channel and you've watched a lot of my reviews, I love movies that show descent into madness, and it's very fun. I actually thought that I created that term, but apparently I didn't because here it is in the synopsis. Um, her family tries to cope the best that they can after an infamous dinner where a certain finger incident occurs. Their lives collectively spiral to new levels of chaos, including, but not limited to, a sadomasochistic power dynamic a cozy coffin, and a bloody endeavor where a dinosaur may or may not be present. All of the skeletons will come out at a Halloween night feast. And this movie was a really kind of a strange roller coaster. I went into it with kind of just uh, <clears throat> kind of like low expectations, but also kind of like a preconceived story in my head. And while that story is present with Lynn Lorre's character, there's like a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on. Um, and not in like a confusing, crazy way, but it just adds to this story that develops and has this crazy, crazy balls to the walls ending. And um, <clears throat> I took limited notes, but um, it was interesting um, nonetheless, because my attention was very much uh, focused on the movie. It wasn't a movie where I uh, kind of started to drift and grab my phone and start scrolling through Instagram posts or anything like that. Like, I was engaged in this movie for the whole time. Um, it opens up on a Halloween night, uh, and in that synopsis, they're having a dinner and a finger gets chopped off and um I, I won't spoil anything of this movie because i really want a lot of um it to be left unknown so that when you see it for the first time you have your true shock value to it there's actually a pretty significant body count and a lot of blood practical blood and um gore and um a little bit more than i expected um the comedy isn't played too um, goofy. It's more comedy, you know, dark comedy. It's definitely um, interesting and fun. So <laughs> weird thing. Lynn Lurie at this stage of her life reminds me of my mother's, uh, my mother, her appearance before uh, my mother passed away. So watching this was very, very, very weird because I kept seeing my mother in this role because my mother did have mental health issues too. And a lot of delusion and a lot of like odd things about her. And some of them are in this character. And um, actually I didn't even talk about the character. So Lynn Laurie plays Angela Long. She's the mother of Karen Long, who's played by Julia Coulter. And these would be the two like main characters um we have a character named mark played by gael bronco and um he's the person who conceived of this movie he's one of the writers with arthur mcclenn and also the director um lou d amato plays dr roger park and that's uh Angela's psychiatrist. He will be recognizable. My One of my favorite characters was Susan the Goth Girl, played by Asia Lynn Pitts, and does a great job. Um, Pancho Moeller plays a character named Cud Joe, and that's Karen's boss, but he's also got like a whole side 
story. He was in uh, Three from Hell, 31, Candy Corn, Till Death to His Part. Uh, he's very recognizable. He's a little person, and he plays a lot of uh, great characters. And he's very fun in this movie, too. And he has one of the best lines in the movie. <laughs> it really made me laugh. Karen has a brother, Stuart Long, played by Jackson Layton. And Richard Long, uh, the dad, is played by James Griggs. And that, that pretty much rounds out the main people. Um, yeah, so it's this weird story that opens up, like I said, on Halloween night. And um, this is where we meet Angela and we see that she's touched. And uh, she has to go away for a little while. Uh, and then that's where we have Dr. Roger Park introduced into the story. So they have kind of their story going on. Karen ends up meeting um, <clears throat> someone along the way. And that story starts to develop. And she's roommates with Susan, the goth girl. And then Susan and Stuart end up having like a little story and there's a grandmother in the mix, too, that lives in the house, but she's she's kind of just like this comic relief um, thing where, where she's she never speaks. She's very, very old, and she just does some very odd things that kind of break the scene, um, and then it kind of just moves on. Uh, she's pretty much ignored through most of the movie, but she has some very, very good moments in the movie, including at the very, very tense climactic ending, she kind of comes into the scene and then leaves. And <laughs> it does change the the mood of the scene a little bit and kind of moves it into a different direction. And I think it's very clever how they did that. Um, and so the doctor, like I said, has the side story with Angela as her doctor but he's also engaged to someone and he's got some debt and things going on with Kudjo, who's Karen's boss. Uh, so there's like a little side quest story there too. And it sounds like there's a lot going on, but it's extremely easy to follow. They do a very fluid job of running this all through the story. And then at the end of the movie, it's like that reveal of how there's like these connection points and, like I said, there's a pretty significant body count, and it's pretty fun. I did uh, think that it was a subtle thing, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but the costume design for Lynn Laurie's character at the end of the movie, and it's on the poster um, with the black kind of feathered cap and outfit that she's wearing, I'm pretty confident that that is a black swan um kind of a nod and uh, I really enjoyed it. It does um, at first it catches you off guard because it's not going in the direction that you think it's going or wanted it to go with a very Lynn Lowry, Angela Long centric kind of killing spree thing. But at the same time it is. So uh, stick through like the first 10 minutes and just kind of get invested into the character introduction thing and then it goes right hardcore and there's so many good moments in this movie i really enjoyed it it was only 3.99 on amazon prime so um i didn't actually even search out i i knew it was on amazon prime because i had this movie on my radar um it may be available on other streaming i never even looked to be honest um but if you did see this it's a good uh um you know if you did see it let me know if you haven't seen it it's a good halloween kickoff movie because it starts on Halloween night and then it ends on Halloween night. And there's actually um, at the beginning of the movie uh, narration by um, Karen explaining like the end of the movie. So we, we start the movie at the end of the movie and then we do that thing where we go back, let's go back before Halloween. And that's what the timeline is. It's BH before Halloween. And then we do, um, a two month jump, a 25 day jump, four day, three day, two day, one day, Halloween day, and then Halloween night. So they, they, I don't want to call them chapters because they're so inconsistent with lengths, but it's just giving you the time frame of 
of what's happening in the countdown to the Halloween feast that uh, Lynn Lore's character, Angela, has planned for everybody. And it's really spectacular. There are some good reveals and some good twists, too. So it's fun, and it's practical effects. And uh, it was one of the better movies I've seen in a while. So, um, yeah, if you've seen it, let me know in the comments down below. Keep checking back to the channel for more great stuff.